This is why I love the junk section. Sega Mega Drive 2200 yen, non-working according to the label, and it's super dirty. As you can see there, I don't know how long it's been in the junk section, but seeing this, I just couldn't let it go. Brought it home, cleaned it up, fired this bad boy up. And that's just for starters. Let's see what else they have to offer both retro and modern. Welcome to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ. We are back for another In The Hunt episode, Kumagaya Saitama Japan. Let's go ahead and hit it. Here we go. We're in this end cap in the junk section. And this one is a little bit of a legendary end cap for me as I always find arcade sticks. And I picked up a number of arcade sticks. But before we dig into that, let's take a look at this last remnant for the Xbox 360. And this is actually a faceplate. And it's going to be coming in at 550 yen. And look at that, practically unused, unopened. Who knows how long it's been there, but it's in pretty pristine condition. But back at the issue at hand here, look at all these arcade sticks. I picked up arcade sticks for the Sega Saturn, the PlayStation, the Dreamcast, and I've been coming to this hard off uh, off and on throughout my time in Japan. And it's no different in this uh, in this uh, particular um, I guess uh, journey out here. We got the Capcom Stick Fighter for 2,200 yen. We're gonna take a closer look at that. But before that, let's go ahead and finish off this end cap. As you can see here, nothing of particular interest, but there is that Konami guitar. And then we have another Tekken 4 PS2 fight stick. But back here for the Capcom, I was really tempted to get this, but I already have one. But this was a nice little surprise. There is a wireless adapter for it. Now, I went ahead and I opened it up, and it only comes with the Famicom lead. This is also compatible with the Super Famicom. I don't have the Famicom lead itself, but... If it had the Super Famicom one, I probably would have picked that up too. But anyhow, let's go into the junk section. And I want to say this area was, uh, at least for me and where I find myself in my collection journey, this was definitely the stronger area. As you can see, there's the Mega Drive that I picked up. We got a power glove there for 9,900 yen. There's going to be some issues going on with it. But in the back there, there is a handle. And we're going to get back to that and see what is hiding behind that. But we have an N64 for 2750, 3850 for a Super Famicom. And you're going to notice a little bit of micro jitters here because I forgot to turn on my stabilization, but that will go away here shortly. Anyhow, we got some PS2s, a Dreamcast. Now we got a 360 for 2200 yen. It doesn't read any discs. And that's the um, I guess that's the great thing about the junk section is the lower prices. And in the case here of the Wii U, it is missing the gamepad, but 6,600 yen. And a lot of this stuff will either work, not work, or missing stuff. We got a Super Famicom here. No sun fading on this bad boy, and it's coming in at 1,100 yen. That was also really tempting. But back to the Power Glove behind it, we got the Super Famicom carrying case. Look at that. Now, this one was coming in at about 3,000 yen. I didn't open it, but usually they do have uh, Famic uh, Super Famicom equipped with that. Now, here's in the bins. Now, one thing that I do want to recommend is there, there's going to be a ton of accessories for handhelds, both of the Nintendo flavor as well as the Sony from PSP, PS Vita, 3DS, DS, all sorts of stuff. So if you're looking for these kinds of things, definitely hit up the bins because they're going to have a lot of it. And look, they even have like uh, some nubs for uh, PlayStation 4, the DualShock. So you can find all sorts of little accessories. In fact, let's pull some more out. We got this Bluetooth one. Now, this is a little bit uh, no good nowadays now that Nintendo unlocked that feature. But before, this is what you had to do to get the Bluetooth uh, streaming audio. And here we have just a little stand for the, the Switch there. But let's go ahead and look at the, the junk display case and see what kind of retro wonders we have. Like this PC Engine controller, I've never seen this thing before, coming in at 1650, and I have no idea what this could be, but it looks to be OEM. Pretty cool to see that. And then we have a SCART cable, another OEM part for the Super Famicom. This is the 21 pin of the Japanese variety, coming in at 3,500 yen. And then we have some controllers, and then there on the right, we have a Game Boy Advance. SP and then above that we have the little amiibo reader for the 3DS that's that's a little bit tempting I have amiibos but I really don't use them in that way and then we have the only Neo Geo game Samurai Showdown 2 for 3,300 yen and then we have some slime headphones so those things were kind of tempting too but let's go ahead and go into the retro gaming aisle and we're gonna hit up this uh, little showcase and I guess this area for me personally wasn't as strong, but you know, we're all we're all after different things 
and I'll leave it up to you guys to decide if it is worthy or not. But we got some Parodius games, that poppin' Parodius coming in at 1,200. Some X3 goodness. Now, I have the X collection on the PS2, and that's more than enough. But I do have a few X games on the, on the Super Famicom. I guess you can never have too much, really. Or maybe you can. But let's go ahead and keep continuing on and see what we find in here. We got some Star Fox there, some Famicom games. We'll have a closer look at this stuff. Just kind of doing the initial the initial uh, rundown here. And, you know, th this store, I want to say that it didn't have a lot of rare stuff, but it had so much stuff that's on the non-priority list. You know, it's like the B, it's all the B games that they had. And there was quite a bit of those games that I'm not really um, actively looking for, but they're definitely on my list. I wonder how that Rally 99 is. But here we have uh, Chomakai Mura for 2,500 yen and then 007 for 1,000 like this. I've been meaning to get this game. I didn't pick it up in this occasion because I, I focused on a few other things, but uh, they had quite a bit. This Lady Stalker, this is kind of like Land Stalker on the Genesis, at least in that isometric perspective. And then we have some Famicom games. But yeah, just a, just a lot of like, uh, just a lot of stuff that's on my B list. It's crazy. And I'm, I'm super curious about this, uh, this Mickey Mouse game. I do love those Disney games, especially uh, curious about the non-Capcom variety. But then we have Makai Mura there. We got Rockman 2 for 2,000 yen. I believe they also had part four for 1,000. And then we have Terra Cresta for 2,500 yen. I wonder how the new one is, uh, Soul Cresta on the, on the Switch. And then here we go. Let's see. We got some loose cards, more loose cards, a few Mega Drive games. And there's that Donald Duck game. That's another Disney game that I'm kind of curious about at 1,000 yen. We have Mappy for 3,500. My goodness. And then we have some Pokemon goodness for the Game Boy Advance for 4,000. And then 4,500. I wonder what's the the major difference there besides the, the obvious uh, color schemes. But let's go ahead and take a closer look. We got Super Street Fighter 2 for 1,500 yen. That one is a little bit, you could find it a little bit less at different places as well as Final Fight. Now Final Fight I do want to pick up, but I want to get it for about 500 yen or less. And the cards don't have to be perfect for me because I actually, you know, I just want to play this stuff. And we got Final Fantasy 4 for 1,000. Next to that, we got uh, Super Mario Advance 4, which is Super Mario Bros. 3. That's a little bit confusing. And then we have some GameCube games. We got Sonic, Pikmin, and I believe that's Billy Thatcher. And then we got some other business down below. Not really sure what that is, but we got some more. That We got another Donald Duck there from Chemco. And then we got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 coming in at 2,000 yen. Now, I believe this one is actually a part of the Kawabunga collection, which I will be picking up sooner or later. I guess it's Rockman 5 that I was thinking, and there it is, 1,000 yen. And look, you just got to really appreciate the, the Famicom cards. They're just so colorful. And what else? Let's see. We got some more Pokemon coming in at 5,300 yen. That's uh, the most expensive one yet. And then we got some loose uh, Game Boy type of cards. I wonder how that Fall Ball is for 2,000 yen. That's not really cheap, so. But I guess it's not super expensive either, but who knows? And what else do we have? A lot of Pokemon uh, loose cards there. We got some Kirby there for a thousand. And then we got some 3DS stuff. We got Super Mario 3D Land for 500 yen. And then just an assortment of DS games. But look at this. If you really want to deck out your XL, this is the way to do it. Coming in at 1650. And let's go ahead and move on here. Now, this is where we're going to see a few games. And this is what I'm talking about here. Let me pull this out. Like this has been on my B list for quite some time. 1,500 yen. I did pick it up on my trip uh, to Kobe, but this one is actually in the box and not expensive at all. This one is 800 yen, Shadows of the Empire. I've been playing this one off and on and it's just old Elden Ring that's uh, keeping me from uh, from the retro gaming as of late. Actually, it's also the Sega, the Sega Mega Drive. But there's just so much to play, and there is quite a bit to see here. What else do we got? We got some puzzle game here for the Super Famicom coming in at 2,000 yen. And a lot of these games could actually be pretty fun, especially if you're into puzzle games. But here we have Super Mario All-Stars. Now, the cool thing about this, it's going to have the original sales uh, tag. 
Look at this, 9,800 yen is what this was retailing for. That is crazy, especially since the yen is weakened. So that was, that's, a, that's a lot more in, in today's dollar or er, yen. But we got one for 1,800 yen and one for 2,000. Not much of a difference between them. And it's probably just comes right down to the scuffs. But they're, they're both in pretty darn good shape. And then let's just pull the other one out just for, uh, just for, for joy here. We got Super Mario Bros. 4, Super Mario World. That's a great cover, by the way. And then we have Mario Party 6, complete with its uh, microphone. And then what do we have here? We got Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts. Never actually played that one, but I've only played the first one. Not a, not a major, major fan of the Kingdom Hearts series. And then here we go. That's a lot of loose cards here. So let's go ahead and take a deep dive in there. We got Rockman 7 for 800 yen. F0 for 500 there. And Super Mario Kart for 800. Now Super Mario Kart, actually all those games you can you could find a less at other hard offs. But you know, if you find yourself here, that might not be too bad of a deal. And what else do we have down below? Some DS stuff. Now, mind you, this is like really like a just filler. This is like a junk type of section. Like 220 yen for Monster Hunter 4. And we have Winning 11 3D Soccer for 100 yen. I was meaning to pick this up and I completely forgot. Which actually happened with quite a few games. We had Bleach there for 200. And I'm not sure what this is. But it looks like it has some kind of add-on compatibility. And then Nepleague DS. This is another one, a strange one, not really sure what's going on there. And then we have a, some kind of visual novel type of deal. Could be interesting if you're into that kind of stuff. But let's see, what else do we have here? We got some uh, Dragon Ball Z, some Grand Prix, some Hudson Soft goodness there, and just an assortment of, you know, just junk games. A lot of this stuff is just going to be at 100 yen. And then down below, we got our guidebooks. We have... Zelda Skyward Sword HD. This is for the Switch. And what else do we have? Chain of Memories. Or Birth by Sleep for the PSP. And then we have Biohazard 5. This is the Alternative Edition or Gold Edition. Look how thick this thing is. My goodness. How many secrets? They, they, really, they must really break down the game. Not that it's uh, terribly hard. But if you're into guidebooks, there you go. They got a few of them there. And then these games are also pretty pretty inexpensive yoshi's island now this one 550 yen it's been years since i've played this one and this one doesn't really seem to get um a lot of love in japan usually you could find it in the junk section or in the down below where in the games where nobody really wants we have a super game boy for 550 yen and here's another one that i forgot to pick up we got mario kart double dash at 550 yen that's a pretty good price if you ask me look at that and it doesn't even matter if it's in English because, you know, it's just Mario Kart. All about the gameplay there. And it looks to have its manual. So that's a really good deal. I should have picked that up. but That's just how it goes. What else do we have here? Got some more uh, N64 stuff. We got Mario Party 2 for 500 yen. Now these are shrink wrapped. We got Mario Tennis. Uh, Majora's Mask there. And it's just amazing uh, the lineup that they have here. Now a lot of it, you know, a lot of it is going to be held back by the language, but it's pretty crazy. Ocarina of Time, Banjo. Now Ocarina of Time, if you've played that game, you could definitely pick up the Japanese version and, and just kind of just play it based off of your experience. Let's take out, check out a few Famicom games. We got Mario Bros. Three. That was a little bit sun faded. We got Pac Land, uh, X X's. I believe that's how that's pronounced. <laughs> Not really sure what that is. And then some Ultraman stuff. Some baseball action, but a little bit of an assortment there. That's pretty impressive, the variety. And then we got this, the Ace Attorney Trilogy for 1,500 yen, complete with the soundtrack. Now I did pick this one up and definitely enjoying it. Sometimes you just got to let go of the pedal a little bit and just, you know, take it easy with the gaming, have something more relaxing. And that's what Ace Attorney is for me. But we have Luigi's Mansion there and some pretty colorful controllers here. Now, these seem to be for the Switch, if I'm not mistaken. 
And then we're going to go to the showcase here. Now look at that big old yellow blob there. That's just going to be Dragon Ball Z. And that's not even the complete series, but 25,000 yen. Man, oh man, that's... Uh, and there's still more to that. But in the back, it's covering an Xbox 360 Lost Planet 2 bundle. And that's coming in at 7,000 yen, uh, 7,700 yen after tax. And judging by that box, that thing, it looks... It could be in pretty good shape because that box is in awesome condition. And then we have the original Xbox One for 13,200 yen. And that thing seems to be complete. We got a Wii U for 8,800 yen. And the boxes on all of these are great in great condition. In great condition. But here we have a twin Famicom for 11,000. It looks like the disk drive is not working, which is usually the case with those. And what do we have here? Some Dragon Ball for the Mega Drive. Next to that, we got some Konami goodness. I'm not really sure what that is, but we have Groove on Fight for the Sega Saturn for 16,500 yen. That's a little bit pricey for that. And we got this Data East uh, 2D Fighter next to Waku Waku 7 for 3,500 yen. That's not a bad price. And that's a great game, but it's a little short on the... It falls a little short on the Sega Saturn just because of all the pixelatedness. But look at the color of the DuckTales game for the Famicom. 5,000 yen. I really do like that color. Then they have Metal Gear. And that's coming in at 8,000 yen. And then we have Princess Momo. I believe that's what that's called for 3,000 yen. And Gradius. Gradius is next to that. We got some more Pokemon goodness here for 6,000 yen. And then we got 1942 for 3,500 and then we have Super Castlevania 4. Now, this is coming in at 6,000. I recently saw a loose cart for 1,500, so there's something going on there. And then we have Legend of Valkyrie for 3,000 yen. That's a great game, especially on the PlayStation and on the Switch, the arcade game. Really enjoy it. What else do we have in here in the back? Just an assortment of uh, controllers, headsets, headphones. Nothing that really calls out uh, to my attention. We got a PlayStation Mini there for 8,800 yen. And a few DualSense controllers. Those things are... The, play, the PlayStation 5 is definitely making its way into hard off. But it's still a little bit, a little bit difficult to buy. What do we have here? We got some mini systems, some Game & Watch stuff, some Amiibos. In the back, we have some Switch games. And then up above, we have our Switch consoles with all uh, a few varieties there from the OLED to the original. And then next to that, well, we have a, a, a visual novel, but next to that, we have some PlayStation 4 consoles and 33,000 for the Pro System. But here we go. Let's go into the main game aisle. And this is what I'm talking about. You know, there's not like nothing that's really, really, really stand out to me personally, but there's a lot of stuff that's on my my B list, my non-priority list. And I want to say I spent like like 6,000 yen here. Maybe, or maybe 4,000. But here we go. We got Advent Children for 1,000 or 110 yen. Now this is the flick, but it doesn't have any English uh, uh, on it, unfortunately. But we have Crisis Core there for the same price. I wonder how the Switch release is. But we have DX Monopoly. A few PlayStation 1 games. Uh, we have uh, Gun Barrel. I believe this is the point, a part of the Point Blank trilogy. I actually haven't seen that one before. And then a visual novel here. Quite a few visual novels in the 32-bit era as well. We got the Soul Dreamcast game there, Shinmu 2. We'll pull that out in a second. First, let's uh, take a look at some PC Engine goodness here. We got Ranma 1.5 for 1,800 yen. And then R-Type for 2,000 yen. That one's so tempting, but I won't get it because I have complete. But then it does have that original soundtrack, so that's something to think about, something to ponder. But here we go. We got Shinmu 2, 1,800 yen. And this game is, is priced all over the map. When I picked it up, it was 500 yen. And this one is actually worth it, especially because of that Virtual Fighter history disc. I'm a big uh, Virtual Fighter fan, and that's definitely uh, definitely a cool little thing. But let's make our way into the PSP. We got Need for Speed Carbon. And I got to say, I love the racing games on the PlayStation Portable. 
There's so many great racing games on this. And then here we have some kind of uh, RPG. What is this? Uh, yeah, it looks like a strategy RPG of sort. Pretty cool cover on that. But then we have the PlayStation Vita. Now here is another one that's been on my list and one that I've been looking for for quite some time, which is Nin Ninja Gaiden uh, Sigma Plus for 1,500 yen. I didn't pick it up because that was a little bit over my budget. But man, that's, a, that's just another one I've been wanting. We have God Eater there for 220 yen. And then I believe these are visual novels. And that's one thing that the PS Vita just nails is uh, all the visual novels. So if that's your thing and you're learning Japanese or you know Japanese, that's definitely um, a handheld to consider. I'm assuming those are visual novels. At least they, they definitely give off that vibe. And look at all that. There's just so many. But that's great if, if you're into that kind of stuff. And here we go. We got some Project Diva action there with the controller. And let's go ahead and make our way into some seventh generation stuff with uh, the PlayStation 3. Now, here's another one that I was thinking about Burnout Paradise for 500 yen. That was a, that was a great game back in the day, still is. We got Biohazard Alternative Edition for 200 yen, Part 6 for 300, and Operation Raccoon City for 300. That's definitely affordable. We got Rocksmith there. We got Dragon's Dogma for 500 yen. And Dragon's Crown. Now, the Dragon's Crown does have uh, English voices, but the menus are all in Japanese. And then Tears to Tiara 2. This looks like an interesting uh, RPG. What else do we have? The Phantom Pain. Now, the Phantom Pain, it does have full English apart from the audio, which is in Japanese. So all the voices will be in Japanese. And then here's another one that I forgot to pick up. Ridge Racer uh, 6 here for the 360. I've been looking for this one for a long time and it completely slipped my mind. But it's hard to carry the basket while you're filming, you know what I mean? But it'll come around sooner or later. And then we have some simple 2000 series there. And Ridge Racer 5 there for 1,200 yen. Now that, that game I feel is like 100 yen. You usually see it in the junk section too. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Here's one that I picked up, Biohazard for the uh, 4 for the PS2. And I mainly got it because of the soundtrack. I don't really care particularly for that port, but for the soundtrack, that's definitely worth it. And then we have Eco for 500 yen. Great game, that one. And then here, we're just going to skim over and look at some of the PlayStation 5 games. Now, those are going to be typically 3,000 and above. You know, that's the that's the... The current gen system so of course it's going to be a little bit higher priced and a lot of playstation 4 stuff and then down below that they had a small section of 32-bit uh, stuff we got alpha 2 or zero 2 for 1100 yen with the spine card that game has been slowly going up in price what else do we have here we have uh crash bandicoot 3 i would have picked that up but uh no spine card i'm a real sucker for the spine card and then we have christmas nights and then more PlayStation 3 down below. Now, a lot of these games are going to be like 300, 500 yen, 100 yen. In fact, I think most of them are going to be 100 yen. And you never know what you'll find in, the, in this little section. But yeah, that's just saying kind of junk games. We have Altered Species. Now, this one totally gives me a Deadly Premonition vibe. I bought mine years ago, but have yet to still play it. But one day I will. And we're going to end things here. We're going to check out this end cap. And... I've got to be honest, there's not a lot of interesting things to see here, but they do have this Ni no Kuni for the Nintendo DS. And my understanding is that you actually do need the book in order to play this game as it's full of a lot of spells. And then the last thing that we'll see is these peg hooks here, particularly the Turbo Graphics games. But anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope to see you all very, very soon. Ciao.